Welcome to Tech Notice. This over here is an Intel i9-11900K test bench. It's like the best gaming CPU in the world, but the question is how well does it do in DaVinci Resolve? So here I have a DaVinci Resolve open and we're gonna test loads of different codecs. So if you wanna get this CPU, you're gonna know what the performance is like on DaVinci Resolve. So if you're interested in the actual desk bench setup and what specs I'm using, I'm gonna leave those linked below, but here we go. So this first clip over here is at the 60 frames per second, and this is H.264 and 420, and 8-bit as well. So looking at the timeline performance over here, it's a little bit um, like choppy. It's just because it can't play back so many frames. Like if we go here 30 frames per second, as you can see, it can play it back so much easier. Even though this is 422 10-bit, as we can see on here, it's uh, played back on the CPU, but it's just the GPU. This doesn't play back so well. This is interesting because on Premiere Pro, this is super, super smooth, but on DaVinci Resolve, as you can see, video decode, the GPU is doing it, but it's not as good. So this 422 10-bit, as you can see, no problem playing it back. Pressing play, it plays back 24 frames per second. Okay, let's have a look. Plays back, no problem. But timeline performance is the one. So this is 25 frames per second, 422, 10-bit. And this is, for some reason, a little bit harder for it to do than this 10-bit. One is th the 30 frames per second plays back easier than this 25 frames per second for some reason. Now moving on to SI 25 frames per second. Look, this is super smooth as well. Like no problem playing this back. And when we press and play, no problem over there. Let's move on to 4K 60 frames per second. So here there's few clips over here. This is a 420 60 frames per second. This is 8-bit as you can see. Uh, this we already tried. This is 422 10-bit, 60 frames per second. And it's not as easy to play back as this 420. So log 422, actually they play back very similarly. Yeah, you can see the CPU is playing back this one. Whereas if you press, press play back, play over here, log GPU is now playing it back. So the first clip is played back on the GPU and the second clip 422 10-bit is played back on the CPU. Let's move on because look like this is quite easy for it to play back. Let's move on to Canon C200 RAW. So this is RAW 4K files. Let's have a look at the timeline. Whoa, that is that's much smoother than the previous one. This is insane. This is very, very smooth timeline performance. So if you press play, Let's have a look what happens. It's played back on a CPU and it's so easy to do. You should have seen this on Premiere Pro because this did not play back on Premiere Pro. But this seems easy. Wow, very impressed with the C200 RAW. Let's move on to Red RAW. 4K Red RAW. Okay, timeline performance. Very nice. Very easy, forwards, backwards. No problem over here. Let's press play, hit play. Seems to be playing back, no problem. CPU 26% used. That's not bad. Moving on to red 5K. Let's have a look at the timeline performance. This seems a little bit more choppier now. The 5K, let's press play. You can still do it. This seems to be fine, but it's struggling now quite a bit, as you can see. Like on Premiere Pro, this chip, that's like, look, it started to lose a little bit. It played back 19.2 frames per second. So this is like very hard. Look at this CPU 100%. Yeah, it was a little bit struggling here on the red 5K. It just can't play it back so well which is interesting because the 5600X, have a look at the playback on the Ryzen 5 5600X, did not struggle with this at all. Let's have a look, uh, 6K Red Row. 
So looking at the timeline performance, this is a little bit choppy now. This is not smooth at, at all. So 6K playing it back, it can't quite do it. It's not as smooth as the Ryzen 5. If you go have a look at that playback. So it plays back 13.1% uh, frames per second. Yeah, and the CPU is the bottleneck over here. As you can see, GPU, plenty of space, loads of memory, but just the CPU can't play that back. Let's have a look at B-RAW as well. I think B-RAW is gonna be fine. Yeah, because it's like a native codec, I would say. As you can see, plays back no problem over here. Timeline performance, very, very good. I've got no problem. Let's press play, plays it back. And look, CPU is 21% utilized. No problem at all. Intel graphics, like the iGPU, don't seem to be doing anything on here, but yeah. Let's have a look at 8K Red Raw. Timeline performance is a bit choppy, but you know what? It's not, not that bad. I've seen worse. Let's press play, see what it can do. Wow. Okay. Look at this. The 8K Red Raw actually can be played back, which is interesting. Okay, it dropped a little bit of frames there, but CPU is 100% maxed out over here. And this is Red Raw 8K, as you can see on the meta metadata of all of these. It's insane. So it can't quite play it back, but it was doing better than 5K, for example. 5K was really struggling. So now let's move on to Canon R5 8K. This is Canon RAW 8K. Let's have a look at the timeline performance. It's a bit choppy and then kind of plays okay as well. But now once it's done it once, it looks quite smooth. So let's press play. Wow. It can play it back, no problem. Like Red Raw was much more struggling than this one. This seems to be easy for this program. So it looks like it's, uh, I don't know what it's using. It's still using CPU. So Canon Raw seems to be very easy on DaVinci Resolve. Much easier than Red Raw actually. So if I press play, look, instantly it starts playing back, no problem. Doing this on the timeline, very, very responsive. Nothing bad to say. Nothing bad to say. Okay, let's also try 12K. Looks like timeline performance is quite okay. A little bit choppy, but hey, this is 12K. Like each pixel is, what, 80 megapixels or something like that. Let's press play. Seems like you can play it back. And look, the CPU is not even maxed out. This is very impressive. This is very impressive. Okay, so the conclusion over here is depending on a codec. So this is always interesting discovery because different CPUs like to play back different things a bit easier, a bit harder. So like Ryzen 5 played back some of these codecs much better than this i9 was struggling with, but this i9 yet again played back some of the other codecs that Ryzen 5 was struggling with. So depending on your codecs and what your workflow is, this this was quite good obviously i'm still impressed with davinci resolve because it's it's so good compared to premiere pro like the timeline performance is just insane so guys hopefully this was helpful to you to understand how good the i9 11900k is on davinci resolve playing back different codecs and if you're editing some of them you know if you can do it off on this processor thanks guys for watching Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. If you have any other things to add or comment, I'm going to meet you in the comment section below. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.